Hey humans, welcome back to otro videito más. Today I'm gonna show you how to get your own iPhone 15 Pro Max with four terabytes of storage. Let's get to it. So how do you get a four terabyte iPhone 15 Pro Max? Well, you connect an SSD. Now this is a four terabyte SSD, which is why my iPhone 15 Pro Max is a four terabyte iPhone. <laughs> First, thanks to Michael Tobin, I got inspired to make my own version of his minimalist design. I tried looking for the same Angel Bird Pocket SSD to go that he uses in his video, but they were all sold out and they're kind of pricey for what you're getting. $600 for only two terabytes, that's kind of up there. Also, the USB-C connection is offset on the drive, meaning it does not sit in the middle, which makes it a little harder to connect everything. Also, keep in mind that the write speeds on the Angel Bird is 530 megabytes per second. So I did some research and I found a slightly smaller SSD with the same thickness and the USB-C port is dead center on the drive. So we can go from the iPhone's USB-C to the SSD's USB-C port. And not just that, but the write speeds are 2000 megabytes per second, which is way more than the Angel Birds. It's enough to record ProRes externally. Before we get started, I wanna clarify, the main reason you would get an SSD to connect to your iPhone is so you can record ProRes externally. That's basically the main reason. There are other case uses, but for this video, the main purpose is to record ProRes externally. And why would you record externally? Well, so you can record for longer. So I got the Crucial X10 Pro 4 terabyte portable SSD. It is very small and powerful, so it seems to kind of have it all. Also, it was only $260 for four terabytes. So for the price of the Angel Bird, you can get two of these drives and still have leftover to buy all these USB-C connections. I'm talking about USB-C connections, I have two different setups, a hard connection and a magnetic connection. Let's start off with the hard connection. I will be connecting this 180 degree male USB-C to female USB-C. Then we're going to attach this male to male. And then afterwards, we are going to attach the SSD. Now that we have these three components all together, we're gonna take the iPhone and connect it. As you can see, the light does turn on, so letting you know that there is a connection. Just so you know, I'll link all these components down in the description below. Also, keep in mind these extensions slash connections have very fast transfer speeds. One has 20 gigabytes per second, and the other has 40 gigabytes per second, which is kind of important for what we're trying to accomplish here. If you do buy other ones, just make sure they have fast transfer speeds. Now. The SSD will be held in place with one of these two MagSafe wallets. The reason there are two options is because one is sleeker and easier to move around, but you do have to cut a hole at the bottom for the USB-C connection to go through. The other MagSafe wallet is a bit thicker overall, but it does give you a very nice grip on your phone while recording. There are obviously a lot of different MagSafe wallets out there that you can try out. These are just the ones I have, so these are the ones I'm trying out. Now that you've seen the hard connection, let's go to the magnetic connection. So the way we're gonna connect this one is the same. We're gonna use the male-to-male -male connector to the SSD, and then we are gonna connect the magnetic connection here to the drive. So now we have basically everything right here. And the last part of the puzzle, which makes it different from the hard connection, is this USB-C connector. It is magnetic. Let's connect this part to the iPhone. And the goal of this is to keep this on always, at all times. That's the goal, because as you can see, if we go and connect it, it connects super fast. You can see that there is a connection right there. It, it is the quickest way to connect it and disconnect it. Also, if you're planning on going with the magnetic route, make sure you get some of these. These are just straight extensions for your other cables, so you don't have to take this little magnetic section out every time you wanna use a cable. 
you can just connect them all magnetically. Now with the magnetic connections, there's a few caveats. So this is what it looks like if you have a case and want to use one of the MagSafe wallets with the magnetic connection. As you can see here, it does not really align properly. And if you're trying to force it, it's just bending the connection and it's putting stress on the components and the SSD and you definitely don't wanna do that. So if you have a case and you want to use the magnetic connection, you can't use any wallet holders. Now, if you don't have a case and you're not planning on using a case, then you can use the MagSafe wallet as a holder with the magnetic connection. Once you connect it, the way you, you check if it's recording to the SSD on the bottom of center of this iPhone screen, it'll say USB-C, which means it's recording to the SSD. Also, these two USB-C U-shaped connectors have an LED light that'll show you when there is a connection. Also, this SSD has a light on this corner that'll indicate when it's connected. Let's do some test shots. So we're gonna start between the ProRes hard connection and the ProRes magnetic connection to see if there's any problems recording through this magnetic connection. Plus, we are also going to compare it to regular video, AKA not ProRes, AKA HEVC, to see if all this is even worth it. So hint, hint, ProRes is only worth it when you're using the footage in post processing. If you don't need or plan to do a lot of post process editing, as in like color grading, then there is no need to shoot ProRes. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max both record in 10 bit color, but the ProRes records in 422 rather than 420. Now these numbers just have to do with the chroma subsampling. Basically the 422 will allow you to push your color grades more without the image going to shit. So here are the two ProRes tests side by side using the magnetic connection and the hard connection. The main thing I wanted to test was to see if there were gonna be any drop frames when using one or the other. And thankfully there were zero drop frames. So both connections are solid and work perfectly. Let's move on to compare the ProRes versus the HEVC. The HEVC is the standard video codec that the iPhone uses to record. So think of it as your normal video that you are used to recording on your iPhone. Now, as you can see side by side, they don't look that much different. They actually look about the same, even when trying to like pixel peep, everything looks about the same. So let's go ahead and apply a heavy color grade and see if there's a difference. So did y'all see any difference or artifacts? Cause I didn't. So let's jump into a control test so you can see what I mean about the 420 and the 422 and the difference it makes to record in ProRes versus HEVC. Now, as you can see here, the HEVC is having a hard time keeping the blacks black and the colors true to life. And if you don't see it, then here is the darker side of the shot. You can clearly see that the HEVC is just falling apart while the ProRes is kind of holding it together. Now this shot was underexposed by two stops. So obviously this is not something that will happen at all. I would hope so. Unless you're shooting in pitch dark night. Max, what do you want for dinner? Justice. But I just wanted to show you the difference and what kind of damage happens when you push the HEVC color grading too far. And keep in mind, I didn't do much. I just adjusted the offset on these two shots to make them visible because of how underexposed it was. We got a problem. So all these tests I have done with this clear case that I got from Amazon and it's a great case, but I use a moment case. Why do I use a moment case? Well, because with the moment case, I can use these moment lenses like this anamorphic lens as you can see right here. So for me, having a moment case is very, very crucial, but I also love how it looks and how it feels. So 
to me, this is the case I'm going with. Now, I just tried doing all these connections again, and to my surprise, the only connection that works is the magnetic connection because the hard connection doesn't sit all the way inside of the USB-C port on the iPhone. So yeah, this bottom section of the case is just a little bit too thick, just a little bit. So I've ordered two different U-shaped connections that I'm gonna try out later. But for now, the clear case is working with both connections. The moment case is working with the magnetic connections. So today is Wednesday. I gotta wait till Monday to get the new parts but obviously you don't have to. Let's jump in on what components do we need to make this moment case work. So it's officially Monday for me. I finally got the piece I was waiting for and I gotta say it does work. So we finally have a solution if you're using a moment case and want to build this rig. So this is the new one. As you can see, it doesn't look as fancy and it also does not have a light indicator at the bottom. So that's kinda eh. But if you are using a moment case, definitely this is the one to get because as you can see, the new one sits ever so slightly higher than the other one and it definitely sits all the way in. I don't know if you could hear that, but here, let me. You hear that? It did it. It locked in there and it's actually kinda hard to remove. So you know there's a good connection there. Now you don't have a light indicator at the bottom here, but you do have a light indicator right here on the SSD. So when it's flashing, it's saying that it's trying to connect. And after it's done flashing and it stays as a solid white light, you'll know that it's connected. One thing that I noticed was that the phone was having issues connecting to the SSD. What I did was hooked up the SSD to my computer, I formatted it, erased everything, and then I plugged it back in to the phone and it read just fine, had no issues, I still have no issues. So it's definitely working really well. It takes 3.25 seconds to connect to the phone, the SSD to connect to the phone. Here, I'm gonna disconnect it right here. It'll change to six minutes max time because there's no external SSD. And then, boom, connect, done. And now I have a max time of 569 minutes, recording 4K 30 frames per second. Let's put it all together so you can see what it, what the final product would look like. So I did buy a new wallet just so I can have this just specifically for the SSD. So we have this connected here, right? It's magnetically connected to the phone, so that's good. Now we have this that we're connected to the phone. There, so right now it is connected. I can see the light inside from the SSD. And this doesn't really go that far out from the case itself. So I really don't think I'm gonna mind putting this in my pocket and taking it around without disconnecting it. Because now when I open up the camera app, it's perpetually connected to the phone. So I don't have to disconnect the SSD and connect it back again. I can hold it very easily as you can see here. So yeah, I'm kind of stoked. I think, I think this is definitely gonna be my setup from now on. And then some of you may be asking, but Pablo, this four terabyte can only be used for recording ProRes on your phone, like it's not really a four terabyte iPhone. Uh, well, if you happen to use your files app, uh, you can actually transfer everything that's on your phone to the X10 Pro, as you can see right here. You can take anything that's on your phone, basically move it or copy it. I'm gonna move it and you can move it right to the X10 Pro. Press copy and you're good to go. So. Technically, yes, you do have a four terabyte iPhone. But yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe. And yeah, that works out.